Let's do a quick video on integration, um, basic integration. Um, this is calculus, and we need it in Calc 1 toward the end of it, Calc 2, of course, Calc 3, um, physics, and uh, so we'll just do basic integration initially. Um, I'm going to use this rule that states if I want to integrate right, some expression x to an exponent n with respect to x, that's what dx is, the different differential, this is our integral sign, that big S. And the way that I do this is I keep the base and I add one to the exponent and then I divide by the new exponent plus c my constant of integration. So this is the reverse of a derivative. We call it finding the antiderivative or going through the process of integration. And there's always a way to check to see if you integrated properly. So let me show you what I mean. Let's do an example and we'll just integrate something like this x to the third dx. So we want to have a good foundation in derivatives, differentiation to be able to do integration because like I said it's the antiderivative, it's the reverse of what you did with differentiation and to check to see if we integrated properly we're going to find a derivative. Okay so let's follow this rule here. So in place of n in my example is 3 and it's just x to an exponent when I integrate, as I go through the process, the integral sign goes away. This just tells us to integrate. This tells us with respect to what variable. So this is going to go away once I actually do my integration. right? This is just telling me to integrate. This is telling me with respect to what variable. So once I integrate, they go away. Now I'm going to keep the base of the exponential function, which in this case is x. I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. And then I'm going to divide by the exponent that I got. And then we say plus c, the constant of integration. And when I simplify this, I get x to the fourth over 4 plus c. This is called my antiderivative, okay? Antiderivative. What that means is if I find, here's my check to see if I integrated properly. If I find the derivative with respect to x of what I just determined, x to the fourth over 4 plus c. Oops. If I find the antiderivative, I'm sorry, if I find the derivative of what I just found as the antiderivative, what I get from here should match what I have here. Okay, what I get from here should match what's here. That's how I know that I integrated properly. Like I said, it's a backwards derivative. So if I find the derivative here, hopefully you remember how to do that. Bring the exponent down. Four, I'm going to show my work. Four over four. Keep the base. Subtract one from the exponent. The derivative of c, which is a constant, is zero. And when I simplify this, four over four is one, I get x to the third. And like I said, what I get from here after I derive what we call the antiderivative, it should match what was here next to the integral next to the integral sign, okay? So it's the antiderivative, the backwards um, of what we did with differentiation. In other words, you're starting with the derivative and you want to determine the function whose derivative is this. Now that constant of integration is very important because that means that there are you know, infinite different functions whose um, derivative is x to the third, right? C could be any number, x to the fourth over four plus one would still give me a derivative x to the third. x to the fourth over four plus three would still give me this derivative. So that constant of integration just shows that there are multiple, infinite different total functions whose derivative is x to the third, right? But this is technically the main part of it. Let me do another one and then I'll check it again. It's say I want to integrate um, x to the fifth plus x with respect to x. So now I have two terms. Okay, so just like derivatives where you derive each term separately, we're going to integrate each separately. So again, once I integrate, this sign goes away because this sign just tells me I'm going to integrate. The dx goes away because this just tells me with respect to what variable 
So let's focus here. I'm going to start with just this first term, keep the base, add 1 to the exponent, right? And then divide by that new exponent. Bring down the sign, then focus on the second term. Add 1 to the exponent and divide by that new exponent plus the constant of integration, which implies that there are multiple different functions whose derivative is x to the fifth plus x. And simplify x to the sixth over six plus x squared over two plus c. You might also see this just for your reference as one sixth x to the sixth plus one half x squared. They're both the same, right? They're both the same function. This is just showing the fraction in the front. And let's just quickly check and see that I integrated properly, okay? So here's my check. If I want to check to see if I integrated properly, then I'm going to find the derivative of what I just found as my antiderivative, 1 6 x to the 6 plus 1 half x squared plus c. And whatever's in here, whatever, sorry, whatever I find to be this derivative, whatever the outcome is, from this derivative should match. So whatever's down here should match what I get in here, okay? So let's find the derivative here. Bring the six to the front, I get six, six, or one x to the fifth plus two times one half, which is one x plus the derivative of a constant, which is zero. And like I said, whatever comes from the derivative of your antiderivative, whatever I got here should match what was within the problem to initially, right? Again, we're, it's like backwards from differentiation. We're starting with the derivative and we're going into the function. Who has that derivative? Now, let me do one more example. Um, and this is an example with what we call a particular solution. Okay, a particular solution. Here's what I mean by a particular solution. Let's say that I want to, or I'm given, f prime of x is equal to x to the third minus x to the fourth. <clears throat> and let's say f of zero equals two. And I want to find f of x. So look at I'm starting with a derivative. I have a point, this is a point, 0, 2, right? When x is 0, y is 2, on the function, not on the derivative. You notice that there's no prime here. And I want to find the function whose derivative is this that also goes through this point. So what am I going to do? I'm going to integrate. My function f of x is equal to the integral of this derivative, x to the third minus x to the fourth, dx with respect to x. Let's see what we get. f of x is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and um, integrate. Once I integrate, the integral sign goes away, the dx goes away. Keep my base x, add 1 to the exponent, 3 plus 1 is 4, over my new exponent, minus, keep the base, add 1 to the exponent, x to the fifth over 5, plus c, my constant of integration. You could do a quick check if I derive this, it's the same thing that I had. Right? This is a function whose derivative is this, but now I have to satisfy this particular case. I want what we call the particular solution. So now this function has to satisfy this point. So in other words, once I have this situation, it kind of tells you a particular solution. You're solving for C. You're solving for that particular constant of integration. So let me show you what happens now when I plug this point in. I want to satisfy that f of 0 when x is 0. So that means 0 to the 4th over 4 minus 0 to the 5th over 5 plus c. When x is 0, my outcome should be 2. This should be equal to 2. Now I did a nice easy example. This is all 0. 0 plus c is equal to 2. That means that c is 2. This is my constant of integration. Right? Anytime you have a particular solution, in other words, you're finding that constant of integration. So now I know that f of x is equal to x to the 4th over 4 minus x to the 5th over 5 plus c, which we found to be 2. Here is my function whose derivative is x to the 3rd minus, minus x to the 4th, isn't it? If I derive this, I get x to the 3rd 
minus x to the 4, right? Bring the 5 down, plus 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0. So the, the derivative of this function satisfies what we initially had. And it satisfies the point that was given to us. So this is called a particular solution.